Well, let me ask you this question. This is this goes into your dynamic with your early your early background. When you okay, when you started doing your, your training, I'm pretty sure that Johnny knew what you were doing as well. So I'm pretty sure you talked to him, had a good relationship with Gargano. Right. Yeah. Yes. So so he that actually came later. Mm-hmm. So I finished training at IWC, right. and then I wanted to keep training because I you know they you get your fundamentals, and yep. they're like. I gotta okay, find tune. Good luck. I wanted to keep training and learn like more advanced stuff because right. uh, you, to stand out on the independence, you really you you gotta know some some stuff. It's not just take down like headlock takeover, shoulder tackle. You gotta learn some That's stuff. Spice things up a little exactly. Bit. Yeah. So um, I was a big fan of, of Johnny Gargano and Candice right. LeRae, and they were they were in Cleveland, so it was like a three hour drive. So to me, I'm like, well, I can do that. So then I. Called up the John Thorne, who was actually the promoter for AIW, and said, like, I wanted to train. So I would go back and forth twice a week between Pittsburgh, after dental school, Pittsburgh and Cleveland right. to train. Gotcha. So what what was their response like? Because, you know, you always tell you tell them, you might tell them, hey, I have, this, I have, these, I have these dreams. Oh, that's the goat right there. Michael, fine. <laughs> I'll tell you. Mm. Um, you know, you have, like, you have these dreams, and you also, you know, you're getting your, you're getting your uh you getting your degree, and what did they say when you told them what you were doing as well outside of wrestling? So supportive. So, like, they, first off, they couldn't believe it. They're like, wait, what? This is crazy. You're, and then they also couldn't believe that I was driving from Pittsburgh, too, because everyone was local. But um, for me, it wasn't weird, because it's it's just... It's what you I, it, do. It's, it's a stepping stone of the process of, of my end game of my goal. Like, that's just the next step. Okay, well, I got to go to Cleveland to train. Cool. It's, it's, it's not a big it's, deal. It's also so odd of what we get ourselves used to. Like, oh, yeah. what, you're doing th- five-hour drives? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah well, what's the problem? We're like, desensitized we to it. We are so yeah. bad. Like, I, I look at certain things in my regular everyday life, and I'm like, man, this used to be very interesting, but now it's not anymore. It doesn't <laughs> hold me anymore <laughs> yeah. because my nerve system yep. is just shot over years of doing this. Like, we, like, we get thousands of people screaming our names every yep. week. Yep. So it's kind of like that um, affirmation feel from, yeah. like, just on certain little things. It just doesn't hit the same as what, as what it does for the, the normal people. Like, oh, my God, you, get, you did that. Like, you got that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just shot, man. We're just nor- – we're not normal people. I'm, I'm letting y'all know now. I'm not a normal person. I will say – Working in the dental office keeps me very humble That's true. because Wednesday dynamite, I come out and I feel like a rock star. They're chanting yep. DMD. It's awesome. This and that. And then Thursday I take the first flight, like sometimes five, six in the morning, go straight off the plane to my dental office in my scrubs. And I'm working all day in the dental office. And a lot of my patients don't know or care that I'm a professional wrestler. So That's I would say I have an 80 year old yelling at me that her dentures don't fit, or a kid biting my finger off. It gets very humbling. It's very like it keeps <laughs> me very grounded. That's, That's true. Very true. 